thrilled. It's a, a pleasure for me to be here. And uh, I would, one thing I would say is that um, I wouldn't call it posing questions, but rather engaging in discussion. Because if you ask me questions, that suggests that I have answers. Uh, and it's better that you engage in conversation than assume that I know uh, how to answer all of these issues. Uh, I, I want to, uh, I was told that I should speak for uh, between an hour and an hour and a half. Well, it won't be an hour and a half, I promise. Uh, but uh, it will be, I suppose, at least an hour. I would like to leave as much time as possible for interaction in discussion. But uh, before I begin, I have uh, been attending a, uh, a place called the Chautauqua Institution, where there are public lectures. And I've learned that one should begin a public lecture with an amusing story. It's even better if the story is relevant, though that's optional. In this case, the story is relevant, and it's even true. And it has to do with my name, my first name, Peter. I think many children, when you were children, maybe you too, asked your parents why you had the name that you had, why they asked, why they named you, what they named you. And so I was like that. And I said, why did you name me Peter? This was a question because I'm Jewish. And in the Jewish tradition, you name after deceased relatives. So that Jews don't have Junior named after the father who's still alive. So there was no Peter in that I knew of. And my sister was named after my grandmother. My mother was named after a deceased uncle. So this tradition was used in my family. And my mother always seemed very evasive when I asked about this. You could tell she was hiding something. Well, in the fullness of time, my mother passed away. She died. She, she was well in her 80s and, and happy uh, to have her life over. She felt fulfilled. But after people die, you get to see documents that you didn't see before. And some mysteries are solved. Uh, I found a picture. The picture was of my grandmother, my mother's mother, taken nine years before I was born, taken in 1936. And in the picture, there was my grandmother, my mother's mother, sitting on the steps of her house with a dog. And on the other side, in my mother's handwriting after 1936, it said, Mother with Peter. So I was named after the family dog. But in the Jewish tradition, this suggests that the family dog was a relative. A deceased relative, probably, because it was nine years and the dog already looked old in the picture. So, this is perhaps one of the reasons why, without my knowing it, I was destined to be interested in animal rights, for having a name relationship with a deceased relative. Not many people, I think, are named after the family dog. Well, what I want to do is discuss four different things. Um, this, number two, will be the main part. This is the main um, contribution, new contribution that I'll make after I talk a little bit about Tom Reagan and Carl Cohen and the, I'd say, the rights approach in the narrow sense of rights. Uh, Tom Reagan, you heard last week, uh, I wasn't here, but I have some good idea what he probably said, uh, that, that animals have rights in, in the sense in which 
uh, at least some animals, those who are subjects of a life, as he calls them, uh, who have a sense of themselves, uh, in this much the same way that people have rights. And this is certainly an excellent way to remind people that they should be concerned about animals. My main difficulty with uh, Tom's approach, and he's a friend of mine, and he knows that I have this difficulty, no secret from him, that this works um, with the same kind of difficulty that rights, strong rights, always have. And that is, one person has a right, and another person has a right. When they come into conflict, it's difficult to decide whose right should prevail. This can happen among human beings, and it can also, if animals have that same kind of right, can happen between human beings and non-human animals. So, for example, um, an easy case would be animals have rights, so we shouldn't deliberately raise them to kill them. No problem. That's an easy case. But what about animals in the wild? What should we do about um, the predators who live by killing? Well, Tom would say, well, the predator is not a moral agent, doesn't know any better, doesn't in fact even have the possibility of living differently. But he would still save a child from that predator. The lion can kill a gazelle, but not a human child. Well, this suggests some difference in rights between animals and people that does not fit easily into his theory. In other words, it's well adapted to certain contexts of human-dominated animals, pets, animals on farms, not so well adapted to animals in the wild. Carl Cohen, on the other hand, would go on to the opposite extreme. Animals have no rights, and you will hear him uh, say, I think, that morality comes from a contract. It is an agreement among beings able to make and keep agreements, beings that have moral capacity, who can make promises and keep promises and feel guilty if they don't do what they agreed to do. Since non-human animals can't do this, they have no rights. But if animals had no rights at all, this other extreme, how would we explain our laws, even in the United States, which is not the kindest place in the world to animals? Even in the United States, we have laws against cruelty to animals. It's, you can actually go to jail. Let me give you an example uh, of what is illegal in the United States. I got this from a, an organization that protects animals. And this mailing was, of course, a solicitation for money to help the organization, which I do. But it was a true story uh, about a criminal prosecution. What the person was prosecuted for is this. His belly was empty, so empty it hurt. The back door would open and shut, and Astro would hope for food. But his owner never brought any. In fact, he didn't even look at Astro as he came and went. Astro drank out of a puddle near the stake he was chained to. The dirty water kept him alive, but then the puddle dried up. Astro had only a few days to live. By